much money. It's tea for him. Two very different families. It's important to me that you're there. One shared experience. Oh, my God. Liverpool, 1960. A time of discovery. Good day, good morning. Hello. Hello. Confrontation. I'm pregnant. <laughs> and friendship. I thought you looked really like So did I. And the beat goes on. Starts Tuesday at 10 on Channel 4. Are we sitting comfortably? courtesy of Sister Sledge. Ta -da! <laughs> In the meantime, as a special treat, we thought we'd invite our mummies along to the show. Hello. Mummy, hello. this is my mum. <laughs> Say hello, mum. Hello, mum. And now I think that my mum's special because she speaks French, she cleans and drives steam engines, and she's been a grandmother 16 times over. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And I think my mom's special. In fact, I know my mom's special. One, because she's the only mom to have been on The Girly Show twice. The only mom in Britain. In fact, the only mom in the entire world. Right, Mom? Yes, this is true. And also because on at least the 80 to 100 times where any other mother could have and should have given me up for adoption, Mom didn't. Thanks, Mom. And this is my mum. And my mum's so special because when I'm poorly, she makes me scrambled eggs. And also, she gave me these boobs, <laughs> if you look, like that. Yeah, yeah that's where they come from. Thank you. And there'll be lots more coming up in tonight's show that your mother wouldn't like. Take a look at this. Coming up on tonight's lip-smacking girly show, an exclusive glimpse of Blobby Robbie Williams letting it all hang out. We discover why we've become a nation of shoplifters. The naked apes show us some party tricks of their first housewarming. Plus, we reveal the saucy secrets of Britain's top astrologers. And a slightly shop soiled Ken Morley shows what's lurking in his basket. So, as we can all see, she's back! Right, my first week back in the studio, full time. So watch out, you two. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Right. Really. Right. I'm scared. And to celebrate my return, I'm doing this week's viewers' husband. <laughs> this week's fabulous fellows are Newshound Ray from Solihull. Not satisfied with getting his pride and joy in the papers, <laughs> Ray couldn't resist getting his picture on TV. By day he's a window cleaner, but by night Ray confesses to a bit of ducking and diving. 21-year-old Matt Spencer Rushbrook reckons that it's not just his name that's double-barreled. Student Matt says he loves girlies with attitude. We just love the wallpaper, Matt. And last up tonight is Andy Rosman from Watford. Stand up, Andy. Okay, Andy, you sent him these pictures yourself, didn't you? Yeah. For those of you who didn't hear, he said, uh, yeah. Uh, now, did you know that the idea was that it was actually the girlfriend or the wives that sent in the pictures well, of the boyfriends? Just a bit of an ex exhibitionist, really. Yeah. Bit, a bit of so an exhibitionist. I thought I'd show off what I haven't got. Uh, Mandy, your girlfriend, please stand up, Mandy. Come on. Uh -huh. Now, 
Now, you didn't know anything about this, did you? No. How embarrassed are you? And extremely. Are you very shocked? I'm extremely shocked. OK, we've got another picture, because you sent quite a selection. Yeah. But, uh, Bandy, how are you going to get your own back? Because there seems to be no embarrassing him. I don't know exactly how you could get him back. What's the sting operation? I can't quite imagine. i have to think of something. <laughs> Let's have a big round of applause. No shame. But you might think that little lot are sad, but they're not half as sad as Sarah's next victim. Yes, it's time for Wankar of the Week. <laughs> Shout going out, it's Liam Gallagher. <laughs> yeah, Liam. Liam, darling, your talent's huge, but so is your ego, you wanker. So what's the story? I used to think you were so cool, but then I met you. My bubble burst quicker than you can say, toss pop to Ted twat. Sorry, Mum. <laughs> now, you reckon you'll be bigger than Jesus. Well, you've had the beard, but it was more Bill Oddie than Budding Messiah. And you constantly boast about how mad you are for drugs. Well, grow up and join the line, Liam. Drugs and rock and roll, mm, hardly a new concept. Now, your image might work wonders with the tabloids, but it's a bit sad that you believe your own press, isn't it? You try too hard to be hard, but how come you only offer other celebs when there's a camera about? Hmm. Some might say you're a working class hero, but you're a professional Mancunian, a scally wannabe. You're a silly muppet. Now don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. The music is cool and Noel is cool. But Liam, stop acting like a tool, because Liam Gallagher, you are maybe, definitely, tonight's wanker of the week. <laughs> Well, first to smoke a spliff, and then recycle ribs, be it the Beatles, Stones, or Kings. You act like them, the gods, the Georgias, pompous sods, and you're the wanker of the week. Yes, Liam Gallagher, the wanker of the week. Yes, you are. Now we're going to talk about the S word. Yes, Ooh. it's some of your favorite thing. It's not sex, it's not shagging, and it's not shopping. No, it's shoplifting. Yes, now, most of us have done it, but who's going to fess up to it? That's what I want to know. Yep, that's right. You smelt it. Please stand up, Nick. This is Nick Duggins. That's Nick. Does this mean anything to you? There's there 12 of them in there. There's 12 in here. It's a pack of 12 condoms. Okay. And what does this mean to you? Uh, when I was 15 years old, I walked into a drugstore, and I slid it underneath my uh, armpit. Yeah. Well, okay, not. anyway, I got caught. Yeah. And, uh... Well, it ended up where I went to court, and mind you, I'm 15 years old, and uh, my mom's there. And uh, they asked me what I did, and I told them. And the judge started laughing, and the prosecuting attorney started laughing, and the next thing I know, I'm on probation for a year. So that was pretty funny. Did you continue shoplifting after that? No comment. No yeah. comment. <laughs> and did you, use, did you have to keep the 12-pack? That's what I want to know. No. You didn't get to keep the 12-pack. Well, no. that's sorry. But luckily, you've got another 12-pack tonight, and I hope you put that yeah. yeah. have shoplifted at least once in our lives. I mean, I know I have. But why do we do it and who does it most? Now, a recent report claimed that girls are more guilty than boys, so the girly show went undercover with the shops and robbers. Check it out. In the high streets of Great Britain, a high-tech war is being waged against shoplifting. But even the latest surveillance and tagging devices couldn't prevent an estimated 665 million pounds worth of goods from being stolen last year. According to a recent survey, the biggest culprits are girls. We asked young women, have you ever shoplifted? An incredible 62% said yes. If we know you can get it free, why No, I'm sorry, I would not. No, Jamaki, you are the biggest thief going, Jamaki. You are the biggest thief. Uh, Nick, little stars to stick on books, pots of glue, crates of beer, sausages, makeup. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've licked toothpicks before I've licked anything. I do think girls make better thieves because they're a lot more devious, as I've found out in the past. They will use literally anything, especially their anatomy, to their advantage. I think it has to be said that there's quite a similarity between the psychology of shopping and the psychology of shoplifting. The end result, this ownership of an object which makes you feel good about yourself, is what occurs in both instances. We then asked, what did you steal? 
24% said clothes, 24% said makeup, and 52% said sweets and magazines. Magazines, hair gel, hair gel, makeup, makeup, clothes, clothes. Fruit, fruit from Tesco. Yeah, fruit. Kinky Barbie with the leather boots and suspender sole. Yeah, well, I shoplifted and I nick lip gloss. We then asked these light-fingered ladies, why did you do it? 20% said poverty, 32% said thrill, and a staggering 48% said pure greed. I think mine was peer pressure. Usually just the general thrill of it all. I mean, sort of get a bit of a buzz, really, don't you? But when I was younger, I shoplifted some earrings because I really, really wanted them, and I didn't have the money, and I didn't see that it was fair that I shouldn't have them just because I couldn't afford them, so I took them. There's a lot of pressure from advertising. They feel like they have to keep up with the latest trends, latest fashion. And the only way they can afford to do that is by going into the shops and nicking off the shelves. For some young women, the temptation does become too great, and it, and it is in part a response to the aggressive marketing. And so a lot of these products, women just have to have in order to be seen to be attractive. With us tonight is Britain's most brazen and notorious shoplifter, Megan Brooks. Hello, Megan. Welcome to the show. Now, if you think you recognize Megan but can't quite place her, this should jog your memory. Megan hit the headlines after she confessed to being a compulsive shoplifter in this cutting edge documentary. Although she was continually caught on security cameras, she was never actually caught shoplifting. I know that they know, but I know that they can't prove it. I don't take from anybody that's working for themselves. But yes, I will steal from the big department stores. I just really love Marks and Spencer. I don't think they're too keen on me. You are Marks and Spencer's most notorious shoplifter. Yeah, I'm really proud of myself. You've, got a, you've now received a lifetime ban nationally in M&S. Yeah, the private detectives a lot. You said that you're particularly addicted to M&S, right? Yeah. Still, that you still have an obsession with M&S, even though Listen, you're supposedly you, 86? You go, you go to Marks and Spencer's and you go into pair of jeans and that, and you've got a store detective up on your backside, right the way around the shop. It's true. You go to Marks and Spencer's and you dress well, and you can go and clean it out. So what about the food campaign? I mean, are you coping with it? Do you like it? I'm on a five-year contract with a television company, and they're doing my life story. Really? Well, that's the band of the gold. <laughs> Doing the series, Kay Mella, Kay Mella that wrote Band of Gold, and after Band of Gold, it's been me next. Fantastic. So it's like it's paid me. Even the crime paid, even when it was still the crime, wasn't it? I mean, you had oh, huge yeah. success. I mean, I, I it was something like fifteen hundred pounds a day sometimes to oh, on yeah. a bad day five hundred pounds a oh, day. Oh, it's really sad when it's a bad day. It really sad. <laughs> five hundred pounds a day. Yeah, that's a bad yeah. day. That was a bad day. So, so but if you're going to do it, and you're going to if you're going to if you're going to take the risk, you might as well just go all on. What was the most expensive thing you've ever stolen? Fox fur. <gasps> but yeah. Take that thing. <laughs> Oh, no, on. no, no, you take, a, you take your clippers with you. I've got some boogie clippers. Oh, yeah. I used to have oh, some so you are. Used to, yeah. <laughs> and you just put it on and walk yeah, out. Yeah, you put it on and you put the hat on. You pick the bag up that goes with it. Just buy a little pick a suit to suit to go underneath it. Off you go. <laughs> you're in green today, like Robin Hood. Would you say you're a Robin Hood? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. from the rich and good to the poor. Did you give That's a lot of it away to family yeah, and friends? <laughs> not to the rich, but I, gave, I, I did give a lot away, but not. Not because I had to give it away, because I wanted to. I mean, you say that it is a victimless crime, but don't we all end up paying for it ultimately? I mean, like, for example, they say that every household pays <laughs> something like £100 a year for goods that are stolen in shoplifting. I wouldn't steal off of an individual, but I'll steal from a department store because they're stealing off us anyway. <laughs> and the only people that can't see that they're actually stealing off us are the prats that can't admit but, um, it. <laughs> so, so what does drive you? I'm from being a kid, I just couldn't keep my hands to myself. It was a choice of either... Run me! That's what it was. It was a choice of either touching the men or touching the goods. So yeah. 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 Is the thrill from shoplifting, if, can you compare it to sex? No, nah, no, nah, there's nothing that compares to sex. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Coming back to your TV series, who oh. would you like to play you? Are we looking at somebody like Jill Gascoigne, Helen Mirren, you know, 
the sort of strong women? I don't know, but I think if, whoever's playing has got to pinch something <laughs> to get the feel of it. Yeah, to get the real You first. know, to, to actually be able to go out there and say, like, well, I'm going to play this woman. They've got to be able to go out I and mix right. something. If they can't yeah. mix it, then they're wasting time. Yeah, yeah. Big round of It's not just the little people in life who get into trouble for shoplifting. If you're famous and you get caught, whether innocent or guilty, it can be publicly humiliating, especially with programs like The Girly Show to remind everyone time and time again. So here now is our very own celebrity who got caught shoplifting top five. At number five, it just has to be Mr. Daytime TV, this morning's Richard Maidley. Richard has actually been cleared on two counts of shoplifting. It was a genuine oversight, apparently. But it hasn't stopped Cruel Wags in Liverpool rechristening his show, Pinch and Judy. <laughs> At number four, it's official. O.J. Simpson is guilty of shoplifting. O.J. admitted to half-inching food and drink when he was younger. If only Nicole had known. Surprise, surprise, it's Christopher Biggins at number three. Biggins was arrested in a supermarket swoop for pocketing 12 pounds worth of batteries. What were the batteries for, Christopher? <laughs> he said it was a lapse of memory, and he was never charged because of lack of evidence. Number two seed is millionaire tennis player Jennifer Capriotti. She's reputedly worth seven million pounds, but last year she accidentally walked off with a 20 quid ring and ended up with a police warning. Game set and snatch, Jennifer. Straight in at number one for a change, it's that girly show favorite, Liam Gallagher. <laughs> Liam, was, Liam was Nick last year when he pinched a packet of razor blades whilst on tour in Sweden. Probably the only close shave he's had in his life. Next time, try and nick some soap and deodorant as well. <laughs> a round of applause for Liam, the light-fingered wanker. <laughs> shopping theme now because it's time to meet Britain's best love grocer. As Coronation Street's Reg Holdsworth, he was the baddest boss in town and even novel Paul Old Vera for shoplifting. Please give a big girly show welcome for Ken Morley. <laughs> Ken, how are yeah. you? Yeah, I'm great. Now, um, you've, I'm great. you've left Coronation Street. What's all this about you shouting at Viva for shoplifting? Yeah. We've got a new product in Better Buyers. It's called Thieves' Hands in Batter. <laughs> <laughs> it's even my store, honey. <laughs> yeah. Now, tell us, have you ever shoplifted yourself? Give us a scoop. Well, my, my dad used to say that if all the thieves had to leave England, the place would be a desert in a fortnight. <laughs> it's oh. true. It's true. That's quite nice, actually. Yeah. I like that little thought. Now, you, uh, you were known as uh, Randy Reg, Yes, I still am. And are you still Randy? Yeah, I'm very okay. Randy. Woo! Hey, there you go. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so you're still quite Randy then, because your memoirs are quite saucy, aren't they? Yeah, they're really saucy and good. Do tell. And juicy and frothy. <laughs> <laughs> Red yeah, because have, you yeah. feel quite at home here, don't you? Yeah, but away, you've yeah. been rummaging around in the uh, in the dusty old store cupboard and you've found a few products that indeed. you'd like to share. Now, these are uh, actually real products. I'll just Come go down now if you're. You're going to go bit. down? <laughs> okay. Now, this is, uh, of course, we're all in Europe now, of course. Yeah. Now, uh, this is a product from our friends over in uh, in France, Le France, and it's called Allo Fanny. Yay! Yeah. So, if your meat's too dry, then get some of the aloe aloe with honey. That's good stuff. <laughs> and keep it fresh. Keep yeah, your honey fresh, fresh with there. aloe fanny. And the next one, and the next one, of course, we all have to one of these. We must have one of these. It's uh, it's all the way from Sweden, I think. Yeah, yeah. Ookie doo pity pity dirty. And it is, of course, crap. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that's no fair trouble enough. with this one. It's that's fair enough, isn't it? Because it's toilet roll and it's called crap. That's yeah, what it's you everything. Use it says everything, doesn't it? Crap. I mean, why dress it up? That's what he did. Exactly. Go down again. Go down again. Now, this Reg, is. Uh, we, we, uh, we in the north, we in the north, uh, that's where we're from, of course, we in the north, we like a nice, what is called a dry cracker. Right. And here is a special product. 
Now, if you remember, one of the highlights of Reggie's glorious reign in Coronation Street was when Raquel, his employee, won Miss Better Boys title. So what better way to mark Ken's appearance on The Girly Show than to ask him to come pet our very own Girly Show Checkout competition. Come on. Mr. Marley, to check out. Mr. Marley, to check out, please. As you can see, um, we've got three wannabe checkout girls, and Reg is just dying to check them all out. Right. Now, what they've got to do, we've got to put them through the paces to see if they're good enough to fill Raquel's sling back shoes. Now, first of all, they've got, to, they've got to build sort of a kitchen roll pyramid here on the floor, and then they've got to dash back to the tills, ring through the stuff, all this big basket of groceries, ring it all through, put it in bags as quickly as they can. Now then, it's against the clock, girls, remember that, and also, Reg will be watching you. So go on, girls! Okay, let's stop it now. Yeah, yeah, now. As you realise, come on, get it up! As you realise, this stuff, this stuff is completely recycled, but it's all recycled. In a pyramid, a pyramid. Right, get me in a pyramid, there's the falling steps. Yeah, come on, girls. Come on! Yeah, mate, that's beautiful, beautiful, lovely, lovely. Up, 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 up! No, it's a pyramid, a pyramid. That's right, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Yeah, come on, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, this, as you know, as you know, you may not know, you may not know, but you're going to know now, there is, in fact, an art to packing uh, things in a bag. And yet, nobody likes to slice a packet, and you've got to get the hard stuff at the bottom. You must get the hard stuff at the bottom. Hard stuff at the bottom. Don't we'll pack that properly. Just, just put the stuff in your problem like that. Right, who's doing next? Who's doing just, just, don't get, don't get the bleach with the soft stuff, OK? You don't want the bleach with the soft stuff, because it makes the bleach go red. Get it in properly. What are you doing? Get it in properly! Sorry! No, no, I trained everybody, pal. I trained you by hand. Just get the stuff. Hey. Ah. Just what you've done it! Yes! But and that, we've, got to, we've got to check, haven't we? Red. With these fingers, I do check. Right, now we're just going through this, because this is important, because you don't want to get home and find you've got crooked nuts. No way. So you have a look in your packet, yeah, because the main thing is you've got to have the softies with the softy. For instance, here's a hardy. You don't want a hardy with your softy, do you? So, oh, come here, come here, come here. Put that in there, which is great. And there's something here. Frozen peas, bread, yeah, you can get away with that, doesn't really matter that one. So yes, that's very, very good. Except and there's some grapes here as well. There's some grapes here. Yeah. Oh, I love a grape, don't you? I love, I love, I love a grape. Yeah. You're out, you're out, you fired you. How's she done? She's fired, is that it? I know, I know, 63. She's got a pitch rock on it. Look at 6B. 6B. Yeah, Netta. But you've done great, girls. You've done very well. You have done very well, but who's the winner? Tell us who. The winner must be. Dun, da, 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 one and for you, and, and this. Uh... Oh, well, yeah, yeah, everybody has one. Big round of applause for Big Red Emma! Emma. And the girls, come on! Thank you. After the break, Robbie shows us he's a big boy now. Mystic Meg makes a right crystal balls up. And Sunderland's most stylish young men throw a sophisticated soiree. But first, this. He's the greatest at it's shake, rattle and roll as Garint Johnson hits the dance floor. Go on, Garint. Those aerobic workouts have really paid off. <laughs> Toilet talk. Does size matter? Yes, size matters, because if it's small, you can't feel it, and if it's too big, it bloody hurts. Yes. Yes. Um, what are you talking about? <laughs> no! Yes! 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 
It doesn't. It's what they do with it. Yes, it's how they use it. It's not the size of the waves, it's the motion of the ocean. When people say it's not the size of the ship, it's the motion of the ocean, that is crap. But you've got to feel it. If you're lying there and you can't feel anything, you're not thinking of England, are you? The only ones that say size matters are those that got small prints. My first boyfriend was like that, and he was still, to this day, the best ever. I'm not into big willies. Who's going to be watching? If he's got a big willy, I don't want to know. If you're in love, you can't really criticise it, can you? There are different sized women as there are different sized men, you know. Very little. Or have you known tight? <laughs> You've had a lot to digest of late. You're suppressing a lot of painful feelings, and now it's time to let them out. <coughs> oh, oh, God, perhaps there's something in this. <clears throat> you might pretend not to believe the stars, but millions of us read them every day, and now it's big business. But it's no longer just a question of stargazing. This is more like Star Wars. As the end of the millennium looms, people the world over are turning to the stars to find the answers. And it has been British astrological superstars like Shelley von Struckel, Russell Grant, Jonathan Kainer and the late Patrick Walker that have been blazing a trail all over the planet. Some astrologers are very well paid. Patrick Walker, for example, was famous for being one of the best paid astrologers in the world. But following the recent death of the world's most successful astrologer, Patrick Walker, the question is, who will take the lucrative top slot? Jonathan Kainer feels he's in with a chance. You can find my predictions in the Daily Mail every day, um, and also in Woman Magazine, Woman and Home Magazine, Prima Magazine, a series of magazines in Australia and America, um, and also on the internet. Um, I do everything I can. With astrological earnings now skyrocketing, everyone's after the top slot. Astrology is now big business and the latest buzzword in the city of London. It's become apparent to a lot of people who make a lot of money that if they match business cycles against planetary cycles, they can anticipate the future and actually make a killing on the stock market. It's always been recognised that there are economic cycles and we know that there are planetary cycles, so there's a relationship between the two. Astrology may be big money, but it is still suffering from a credibility problem, as mystic Meg was to discover. I can see a lottery winner Recent revelations about Mystic Meg's past as a porn writer came as a real kick in the crystal balls. The image Mystic Meg projects is generally very bad for astrology. She uses these gypsy accessories, especially the crystal ball. And while Meg may have had porn in her stars, Wendy Ann Page, former Daily Star astrologer, saw stardom in porn with her new career in The Lover's Guide. Most astrologers would love to be taken more seriously. I would like it to be better understood. It was always considered something down market. But the real astrological mystery remains. Who will replace Patrick Walker as a rightful heir to the stars? I don't think there'll be any one successor to Patrick Walker. In a way, it's like asking if there would ever be a successor to the Beatles. to see who will replace Patrick Walker as king or queen of the stars. There's one woman who claims a successor isn't necessary. In her column in the Sunday Express, clairvoyant Samantha Hamilton claims that Patrick contacts her from beyond the grave. Spooky. And she's here with us now to tell us all about it. Welcome to the show, Samantha. <laughs> so, it's true, is it? The late Patrick Walker really helps you out with your column. Indeed. So how did you first get this arrangement, then? Well, <laughs> how I first arrangement. Sorry, he visited me when I was asleep in my bed. Really? What, in yes. your dreams? In my dreams, yes. yes. Yeah. And what did he say in to you? Dreams. I mean, what, like a sort of vision or, you know? He said actually that he was going to work through me for the next ten years. <laughs> yes, he sure did. <laughs> really? <laughs> and, um, and I thought, yeah, mm, yeah right, just another you. cranky dream. Uh -huh. And then, 24 hours later, the Sunday Express rang me and uh, asked me to do sort of like, how can I explain it? A prediction um, through Patrick Walker. And I said, this is really weird because, wow. you know, the night before I had a dream about him. Has he actually given you any predictions? Any serious predictions? Yes, he has. Because he helped me on when the Sunday Express said to me, can you give something national, some mm. kind of news? And I said, yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead. I'll ask Patrick Walker 
what he's got to say to me. Hold him up. And basically, um, what first came through was the oil rig disaster, which we oh, had, really? right? Um, Coronation Street, the fact that somebody was leaving from Coronation well, um, Street. We heard on the film though that everyone's trying to get into his top slot now. Do you think we're actually exploiting his name? by, you know, saying that he's coming through you. I mean, it's got, you know, you're doing your job I now, think basically. if I was exploiting his name, he wouldn't have chosen me. No. He's chosen you. I, that's what I feel, yeah. So you were singled out and this was all day. Well, I mean, I'm surprised he chose a woman, aren't you? No, I think it's great. <laughs> I think, you know, we are the way forward after all, oh, eh? yes. <laughs> <laughs> You've actually done our charts, which I'm so excited yeah. for. Yeah, I looked at the moon positions, because that rules your emotions. And Claire, you've got yours in Taurus, and so... <laughs> This is the bull. Yeah, that's the bull, that's the bull, that's the bull. That means I'm going for it. Well, you're going, you know, if you're going to go for someone, you're going to go for the wallet first. <laughs> what? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. You've got me wrong there, somehow. Oh, have I, darling? So what about me? I'm all excited. Oh, you. You've oh, got Sedgy, so I can actually see you living abroad. But you're going to oh, be torn, really. You're going to be torn because of your love life. <gasps> really? You do get yourself into a little bit of a pickle, darling, when it comes to your love life. I do. She gives the boys a run around, so if anybody out there that fancies her, you better just watch out. Watch it. God, I've been found out, haven't I? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, big round of applause. Thank you very much. Thank you. After the break, the naked apes invite you to a piss up in their pied a terre. And we get familiar and funky in the studio with Sister Sledge. But first, this gratuitous girly moment number 73. The current top tourist attraction in Barbados is spotting ex-Take That star Robbie Williams and his new posh bird Lady Jackie Hamilton Smith as they enjoy a welcome break. One holidaymaker couldn't resist sharing his camcorder exclusive of Robbie, showing off his athletic prowess. Unfortunately, his new lady friend seems distinctly unimpressed with all the huffing and puffing. Well, at least it proves it's not his body she's after. Didn't Gary used to be the fat one? Toilet talk. What's the sexiest present you've ever had? The sexiest present I've ever been bought is a Jerry Hall G-string. Sexiest present? Underwear. For a stock is a suspender set. A G-string. Condoms to be used at night. Personal stereo. This is May's outfit. The sexiest present I have ever been bought is a vibrator. <laughs> vibrator. Mambo size. The sexiest um, present I've ever been bought is a whip. Nothing! A ring! A single red rose. Ring tart and French knickers <laughs> and a bra. A G-string and a chocolate knob. <laughs> I've never been bought anything sexy and I'm still waiting. The sexiest thing I've ever been bought was a big jumbo sausage. <laughs> oh, you lucky girl! <laughs> Whether you're English or American, or English and American, as in my case, one thing's for sure, there's no place like home, as the naked apes are about to find out, those dirty boys. The Naked Apes are Sunderland Bowman Johnny, a classic lovable rogue. His best mate Kevin, who loves his beer first and women later. Brian the Geordie, who's a real life Sid the sexist. And Nathan, the shy student who's desperate for a woman. Tonight, Kevin is moving out of his parents' house and into his very own bachelor pad. This is the moving out case. The couple of things I won't be taking these. Gotta take them. That isn't gonna fit in. I'm a complete mother's boy. I love it in a way, but I know fine well I've got to keep the habit because if ever I'm going to like get a real woman, I've got to learn to cook more than beans on toast. I get no privacy at home. I mean, look at it. You can't exactly bring women back here, can you? Ashley is definitely coming to my new place. I'm going to miss my mum a hell of a lot. I'll, I'll take the mick out of her cooking, but she's always been there for us. She always looks after us. I'll be back tomorrow anyway when we do dirty washing. <laughs> Maybe you've got your toothbrush. I'm moving into day and I give it two weeks before the flat is either flooded, blown up, or um, there'll be 35 people living there. After Kevin's moved his stuff in, he's got just four hours to prepare for a wild flat warming party. Well, this is it. Got the keys, new flat. Well, one sweet home from now on. We're going to see Kevin's on floor seven. Hey, 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 hey. The rest of the lads, when they do see the place, I mean, it, it's not much, but it is my place. And they'll be jealous as hell. This is their the flea pit. Kevin's can he bust them this mate? Hey! Yeah? Whatever you do, right? Don't use the toothbrush. Far? I use it to clean the toilet. So this is Chandra Larkin. Yeah. 
So the reason I am actually doing the dishes is okay. We need the sink to put the punch in. Johnny, you know that board you wanted for your dips? Uh -huh. No, I've got it. We're making no punch for the party now. We're just going to put a shitload of everything in. But it's going in the sink. Mm. I should have a bit of a kick to it. Tungsten, very strong, 9%. So we'll put a couple of cans of that in, I think. <laughs> Maybe some fruit. It's a punch fish! Punch is ready. But before the first guests arrive, it's time some bath time fun. We're putting beer in the bath because the fridge is not big enough for the amount of beer we're going to be in late. Well, it looks like um, all the beer's in the bath now, so we'll just see you over the party. The perfect flat warmer. Beers on the left. With be lots of close friends reminiscing about old times. Bowl. We're making a twist of it because we can't afford to buy it. Perfect flat warming is when everybody gets completely drunk. They're doing embarrassing things which they completely regret the next day, and everybody has a really good laugh. Left foot bloom, it's underneath his arms. The worst thing about living with Johnny would be um, both getting drunk, and he'll bring some slapper back to my place, and he'll end up on the set there, and when I get up in the morning, be damp, and that's not the sort of thing you like to accompany your cornflakes to when you're watching Good Morning TV, whatever. Hey! I'll show you my party trick. I can only do this once. Don't try this at home. Oh, no, you turn that down. Johnny was great, he was pure and perfect. I really admire the guy for that. It's just like good, harmless, clean English fun. People who think that it's disgusting and everything, you just prove it's still not all your fault. Next time you have a party, you eat and you have to eat mince. Just whip your watch it out, you know, or get a lighter out. Oh, Gerald, look at this. You'll have a time of your life. <laughs> My flat warming was definitely in the top three parties that I've ever had. If that's what single life is like, living on your own, Give it to us on a plate. I love it. Well, next week we've got... What have we got, Mum? You've got that Rosa Perez from Do The Right Thing. And what else, Mum? You go to Las Vegas to visit a home of venerable strippers. Yes. Oh, what else, Mum? <laughs> oh, it's those lads, the Naked Apes. They have their first trip into Amsterdam's red light district. Yeah. <laughs> Sister Sledge with We Are Family!
Big Mouth. It's big, it's mouthy, and it's chocker. We've got film, we've got bands, we've got internet. Big Mouth, we've got famous people. We've got this, we've got that. Big Mouth. We've got him. We've got her. We've got views. Big Mouth. This guy's gonna be a big star. We've got reactions, we've got matter of factions. We've got Miranda Sawyer, we've got albums, we've got me. Big Mouth. But above all, we've got opinions. Big Mouth starts Tuesday, 5 past 11 on Channel 4. That's where Channel 4 comes to a close for the moment, but we are back in just a couple of hours with Trans World Sport. Now, though, from myself, Ben Edwards, and director John Boone, it's time to say goodbye. It's good night from me, and it's good night from him. Good night.